In this episode, we're going to be attempting to build a Christmas tree out of tinsel, balls of jolly, and some wire. Yes, builders, we're going to be summoning our inner Martha Stewart's. Roll the intro. Hello there, builders, and welcome back. Today, we're going to be attempting to build a marvelous tree that I'm sure that will excite your partners, especially at Christmas time. What we're going to be needing is our lovely little tinsel here. I found mine at Michael's. It was actually on sale because we're very close to Christmas, and as most of you know, decorations tend to go on sale at this time of year. Then, I also found myself some little balls of jolly. Aren't these great? For the most part, I stuck with the whole red and white scheme, but I gave myself a little bit of green here for a splash of color. Yeah, okay, we're done with that. I want to be honest with you guys here. I actually have never attempted to build anything like this before, and I'm doing this kind of completely freehand. I have a concept in my head, and if it all works out, well, hopefully uh, you'll see a beautiful Christmas tree. Now, the idea here is we're going to start off with three different circles. Uh, the biggest one being our base, the middle one being a slightly smaller one than our base, and the top one being the smallest circle. These circles will be attached by a little hook mechanism. Think like our 3D metal models, how we have the tabs going into the insertion holes and we do a little fold. We're going to do something similar to that, uh, but we want to be able to open and close them as we add supports to this. And I'm going to explain that as we go, of course. So if you want to follow along at home, I just grabbed some tinsel, like I said, right from Michael's. It was on sale, rock on. Same with this stuff here. I tried to grab um, similar styles of color. I went for the whole white and red mostly. I did grab the green here, but I don't think I'll end up using it. I just wanted some of the bigger uh, balls. Anyway, uh, let's start off here by talking about the gauge of wire. Now there's all different kinds of wire out there. I went for a thicker gauge. Unfortunately, I've had this wire for a long time and I don't have the container it came in, so I can't tell you at this very moment in time what gauge it is, but I will include it down in the description below, including a link to everything here. Now, of course, I'm not sponsored by Michaels in any way, but if you wanted to throw some things my way, I'm open to it. Let's look at this little wire real quickly. Now, if you're used to building with 3D metal models, you might be used to the feel of how some of this metal actually works. Um, what I'm going to do is kind of get enough wire here uh, that I will be satisfied with for my base. Now, uh, think about it. I only have this much wire to work with, so I don't want something too big. Uh, and also, I only have so much tinsel. So we got to think about these things as we're going along. We're not going back to Michael's and Shane to get more stuff. Uh, that also includes a glue gun. Attaching these little guys later will be a little difficult, and I'll probably end up making uh, some hooks with this wire here, which is still inside the package. This is 20 gauge wire. Do you know how I know that? It's in the package. Now, going back to this here, what we're going to do is just kind of get a nice little frame. Now, you'll notice this is a, still kind of a thick wire, but it, it does allow you to bend it a little bit. And I'm going to show you how we're going to straighten it out afterwards, but for right now, Small ones, big ones, some as big as your head. I think that's about the right size. What do you think? About the right size? Mm, I don't want it to be too pointy either. We don't want a Madonna. So uh, let's pull this back a little bit more. I think that's a good base. I like it. Now we're going to go a little bit more. And the reason why we're going to go a little bit more is to have the... Uh, little bit of wire there that we can actually work with to create our lock mechanism. Now let's talk about pliers real quickly when you're doing this. I had these little guys out first and I tried to cut this and it didn't work. And that goes for most of your 3D metal model tools. Put them to the side. You don't want to ruin them here. You want to get some good stuff. This stuff is not going to work. Um, this one here, I wouldn't say is good stuff, but it works. So we're going to use it here and uh, I'm going to cut as close as I can down there at the bottom. Now we got a nice little cut here. We got our circle egg frame. And what we're going to do is we're going to do our best here just to kind of work it into a really cool pattern. Now, if you've been following the channel before, you do know that we have tools that can help us with this. Um, now, what I'm going to use, and I know I said put your 3D metal model tools aside. 
I'm eating those words immediately. What we're gonna do is we're gonna grab a dapping set. Now, if you don't have one of these at home, a giant marker will work just fine. That was a, that was hairy. That's what happens when you get a cat. He's a mischievous little bugger. Now, what I'm gonna do, much like a ribbon on a present when we're trying to get that really nice curl there, we're gonna do something very similar with that, like that, I should say, uh, with this little tool. And as I do this over and over again, we should get a really nice circle. Oh. I mean, it's not perfect, especially up here. So let's see if we can run that through again. You want to play games? I'll play games. All righty. There we go. <clears throat> we got a circle or somewhat of a circle. It's not that big of a deal. Um, if it's not a perfect circle, because it is going to be covered in uh, tinsel. But of course, um, the better the frame, uh, the better it's going to look in the end. So think about that. If it looks like crap, you can hide some stuff. But at the end of the day, uh, it's always good to have a good base before moving on. Uh, let's go back to here. Now, um, I know this is going to be kind of difficult to show you. So I'm going to do this like a this. I'm going to do this the old magic way. We're going to take our pliers like this. We're going to grab the one side and we're going to bend it just like that. Okay. Now we want a really good bend here and we're going to just kind of do something like this. Now, see, that's a hoop. And uh, what's even better, if you get a little bit more of the metal in there, so we can actually take that little hoop that we just made. And we're going to take that little bit of extra wire that we have there. And we're going to take it. Now, if you've already bent this, it might be a little difficult. So I'm going to grab it right by the tip. And uh, yeah, just by the tip. And we're going to take it like this. And we're going to bend it back and uh, bend it down like this. Now we have our loop and we have a little knot there. I did that just by kind of flipping uh, the wire around. Now, as the wire gets warmer, when we're, of course, moving it around, it will be easier for us to be able to achieve the things we want to be able to achieve. Uh, but keep in mind, when it cools down, uh, it might be a little bit disformed. For the most part, it holds shape, but uh, you know, look, I mean, I've already kind of disformed our circle a little bit. Again, we can run it through the old ringer there. I could use a thicker gauge wire, and that would also help me. But again, we're not going back to Michael's and Shane. We're continuing on with our little task. You know, I wonder if I could make some like cool wire art. That's something I should try. Anyway, all right. I guess we kind of are making wire art. Ah, back to it. Okay, so we got a little uh, hook here we're now going to do. So the hook, again, guys, just like our 3D metal models, uh, we're going to do it just like this. Okay, that's it for right now. And there's a reason for that. We're going to have to uh, slide everything into place. And of course, um, being able to unhook this and put our stuff in there will be a lot easier. And we're going to do the supports in the moment. But first, let's get our three circles done. So that's our base. Want to see me make a loop real fast? <laughs> there you go. Loop. Done. I mean, almost done. Oh, look at that. Awesome. Now, okay, you can see we have uh, one circle and we have one smaller not circle yet, but we're going to run our little tool through it. So again, we unhook it and we're just going to run it through here. Uh, we can fix this. This little edge here got a little bit too bent. That was a little too hardcore. I actually think that this is too big, but again, we can always take away wire. Um, this is just showing you now what these guys look like. There we go. We got one that's smaller than the other. I almost feel like I'm doing the linking rings trick. Okay, now again, this is gonna be the smallest ring. Under, over, under, over, under. Just kidding, I'm not doing any of those things. I just really wanted to say something that was a little less awkward than massaging the wire. You're probably enjoying this on Christmas, and if you are, Merry Christmas. Let's just take it back a little bit. If you're preparing for next year's Christmas, well, my friends, welcome back. We're just taking some time. Urgh, what the heck? Oh, I was through, I just didn't realize. <laughs> I think we just need our top. I'm kind of worried though that uh, we don't have, um... okay, so let's update things a little bit here. I know I said I was gonna put the supports through, uh, but once I did, there was a few problems. One, support structure, not that great. Two, um, I don't have that much garland for the amount of height I had there. So what I did was took the circles that we had originally made, I took those and I shrunk them down. Uh, and then I took some new wire and I ran five wires uh, at equal lengths and I tied them off at the bottom and then I sewed them through. And I'm going to do the top layer now showing you guys how I'm going to sew these through because I found that that's actually the best method. 
uh, the, how we actually secure these wires into place is by tightening the wire at that little circular joint that we make when we put it through. Let me show you real quickly. So like I said before, we have that little ring from earlier, our tiny little top ring. And what we're gonna do right now is kind of determine where we want that top ring to be, which I think is right about here. Basically what I'm doing is I'm making sure it's good on one side. And uh, from there, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make a little bend, okay? And then I'm gonna bring that back up. Okay, so I know you guys can't see that, so let me explain this again. So what I did was I made a little bend there where I want my ring to go. And now I'm just matching my ring up again to see if it actually links. And it looks like it's actually a pretty good height from the original one here, and it'll have a good little top here too. So knowing that, what I wanna do is I wanna make sure that all of my other wires are bent to the same or very similar uh, distances, okay? Uh, so that's very important, and um, I, I can't stress this enough. It's super important, and it gets a little difficult because as you build this and as you go up, um, you're adding more and more stuff. Let's go ahead and move on here to bending the other wires. Okay, so I've gone ahead and trimmed up the top here a little bit too. I put all my eyelets in here and fed them all into their little tiny holes. And we got a generic tree here at this, uh, well, I should say generic cone shape, if you will. Uh, now what we need to do, the important thing we need to do is try to make everything a little bit straighter uh, before we start adding on our details. Uh, now what I'm gonna do is try to tighten up these eyelets a little bit more on every side, and that should give us what we need. Also, I wanna kinda tip this a little bit. Uh, so what I'm gonna do first is kind of bend these uh, a little bit like this, like that. Working this top angle is just so hard because I am not getting anywhere fast with securing this in the way that I want to. You see, I wanna make sure that these guys kinda of lock together like this, but I also want proportions. So I'm kinda of making a triangle at the top here with my pieces with the intent, I actually almost need another support because if I had another support, it would have been even at the top, but because I don't, I got this one lone wire. And so what I'm gonna to try to do is now loop that wire in with the other ones. So can I connect? I think I can. Oh man, we are so bloody close. It's like that insertion hole that you just can't get in there, but I am right there. We got touchdown, ladies and gentlemen. All right, so now, I'm gonna straighten these guys out one last time, hopefully. Um, I'm sure that I'll have to do it a couple more times because Lord knows the more times I say that I don't wanna do something again, I end up doing it. <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> yes, the tree, my friends, we have our tree. Now, we're gonna wrap this guy up and how we're gonna do this is we're gonna try to disguise mar most of our larceny we're gonna start wrapping this guy up. Now, the important thing to understand here is depending on how much supports you actually use to create this build, is how kind of conish this is all gonna come out. What I wanna do is connect the tinsel. And without making a giant mess, see if I can actually weave it in here into that little opening there. Okay, I think I got it in there. Um, so what we're gonna to try to do now is just create a really nice, uniform wrapping job. Um, I'm basically going to take this out completely and I'm going to lay it on top of the other garland, but I'm also keeping a little bit of pressure here because you do want, oh sorry, correction, a little bit of tension here because you do need this to be a little bit tight. So don't let this just hang here, otherwise it will lose that cone shape that we have. So we're just kind of slowly wrapping it, okay? But we are, again, you'll see that I do have tension on this as I wrap, doing some more turning here. Again, just kind of layering it on here, making some happy puffs, some happy puffs. Oh my goodness, ladies and gentlemen, it was like it was made to become a tree. Now I know, Again, this isn't perfect. It's not, it's not perfect yet. Um, there's a lot of things it's missing. It's missing ornaments and we need to put ornaments on the tree. And uh, one thing that we need to do is get these little presents here. 
Uh, I'm going to try not to waste too much more time with all of this. So I'm going to take some red presents. And what I'm going to do is go over to my little other gauge here. Now, this is just a simple, again, 20 gauge wire. And I'm going to take my pliers. I'm going to cut it like uh, we're only making little hooks. So we're going to make this little guy here. And just like on your Christmas tree, we're going to grab the edge and we're going to bend down like such. It's a little tiny U there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing on the bottom. We're going to create a little hook. And the reason for that is because we're going to feed the little present here like that over the hook. It's basically just like a little staple. You know, if you have a staple or a home that actually might work really well. And then what we'll do, hang the presents in our tree. Very simple stuff. Again, that's just one present. Now let's go ahead and decorate this tree and see how it looks. All right. Okay. I think we're looking pretty good. It's uh, not necessarily a Christmas tree, more of a cream puff, but uh, I mean, a jolly cream puff. That's good. I did use some of the green in there. I just to kind of try to make it look a little bit better. Let's talk about how I made some of the ornaments real quickly. That some of the material that I have here doesn't actually come with any kind of way to connect it to the tree. How did I overcome this? Well, I took a hook that I already made, I unbent it, and then I started to do a little screwing action like this. And then eventually it popped through the bottom. And the reason why I actually moved it back and forth like that is if you don't do that, it tends to blow out the bottom and you're left with not really a good looking ornament. So what we're gonna do is just kind of pierce that through just like that. I'm gonna take my pliers and I'm gonna make a little tiny little bend. Just a tiny one. We don't want a big one because you don't want to see the wire too much on the bottom. And then what we're going to do is we're going to pull that back just like that. And we are left with a really awesome looking ornament. Now, if you need to, you can go back to the top here and kind of extend this out and then bend it again if you uh, need to get further into the tree. But as you can see, we can take this guy like this and um, we're kind of looking a little bit full here in our cream puff. But just to make it look a little bit more decent, we'll put it right Oops, actually, we just lost an ornament there, so we'll go right there. Okay, and there we have it. Our Christmas tree, all complete. Doesn't it look awesome? I think it looks awesome. And to be totally honest with you, outside of fiddling with that wire work, it was pretty easy to do. And I actually had a lot of fun trying to make everything work, especially not having the right tools around. Is this the easy way of making these? Absolutely not. There are way better ways and way better looking trees out there than this one here. But I had a really good time fiddling around trying to do this with you. And if you guys had a good time, don't forget to press that like button. It really does help spread the channel around. And if you want to see more projects, not as uh, janky as this one, hit subscribe as well as we got all kinds of cool stuff coming on in the future. And I would love to have you there with me. Until next time, Groovers, keep building. Now, I know exactly where you're going. There's a steampunk Santa Claus that was been missing a little bit.